Our Athabascan Fiddle Festival stage is filled with influences from the past, and the newcomers create changes, and the music continues to evolve into what it is today. The Athabascan Fiddle Festival is a unique event. People come to make a positive connection in a festive environment. Music and dance touches the heart, seeing clean and sober people interacting together. Today we increase our awareness of the Athabascan Fiddle Festival through social media. We're inviting the world to join us in our expression of feeling alive. They march into the table to see the same old thing <laughs> and the food on the table <laughs> and the pork in the table. <laughs> but you better not complain. The styles for them, like if it's Kuchin area up in Fort Yukon area, Arctic Village, Canadians, that's a style that came to them, right? In early years, it was jig and fast. And so that stayed kind of in that area. Well, in the trappers and miners coming down to the Lado, Galena, Caltech, you know, there's more of that two-stepping, right? Two-stepping. It was all who initially brought that music to, our, to their areas, that, that style that they kept. I grew up with this kind of music, you know, and good to see younger kids picking it up and turning it on, you know. I enjoy afternoon sessions when the students come here. They look forward to it, to dance with asking the elders to dance. We used to sit way in the back. When it first started 35 years ago, we sit way in the back now, or right in the front being the elders. That's, that's how many years it's been. Everybody likes fiddlers. That's what our elders used to, that's how they used to enjoy themselves. During the holidays, you know, holidays and with the music, People that like country music are, are beginning to be in the age like myself, like I'm 78. Uh, elderly people or mid people in their mid ages. And uh, there are groups that are uh, training uh, the young people how to fiddle or play a violin. And uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. I wouldn't have been here this time around. It's too hard for me. I lost a part of me. But my grandsons wanted to keep it up. Jerry, about a month ago, said he wanted to keep it up. And also Matthew. So I told him, well, get out of all the patches. I know they play rock and roll, but they have to learn to play for the two-step and country style music too. So if they could do that, then they'd be good musicians. One. I see that we have more young, because we go teach out in the village. We teach fiddle, guitar. Then there's a local one that teaches here in town. 
uh, young Native fiddlers. Um, I would hope and that I see is we see more youth coming up and taking over. And this is my second year playing and it's been fun playing up there. Seeing everybody smile, laugh, everybody up on stage, make jokes, you know, it's fun. Well, I grew up around a lot with my dad playing guitar around me, so I eventually picked up playing the guitar and some bass and some drums. I remember 16 years ago, we, they used to have it over at the um, Eagles Hall. My grandpa Joe Truck, he's the one that brought me here when I was a young kid, and ever since he brought me here, I've been here every time. We have a lot of young people that's learning how to play music, playing guitar, playing um, fiddle. My son picks, picks up the guitar. He's 10, so you never know. He goes to his room and we hear him fiddling with his guitar, so he'll pick it up maybe. Maybe he'll play with his dad before long. You know. That would be good. When I'm dancing, um, I, uh, I'm in my own world, you know. And I, when I look around and I see the people near me dancing and smiling and laughing, I, I feel like they do. I just feel happy. My older brother, about 10 years ago, and he taught me how to play the bass. And my first song was Wagon Wheel. And he wouldn't teach me how to play guitar, so I learned on my own just watching him over a year. Then he told me to learn how to play drums, and yeah, it was a tough one. But I got gotten playing drums after that. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's one of the only drug and alcohol free events where all generations could come and be feel safe at it. There's a new batch coming in kind of thing. It's kind of a change in musicians and stuff. Times change, the taste of the people change. As you can see, there's other types of music that are be, you know, beginning to be played a lot. Uh, uh, country rock and rock and roll, that type of thing. I think the change will continue. I mean, I don't mind, I don't care what kind of music it is. I still like music, so, but I don't like rap. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this goes on for years and years. That's what I would like to see. A lot of kids pick up that guitar, violin, mandolin, whatever it takes. Drum. people to get together during this kind of time because on the other side of the good times there's the bad times and, and uh, we, we all as, as people we always see bad times. Our people the native people have caught up in that cycle so many times especially with the villages and I think uh, drug-free uh, entertainment is, is really good. You know you don't have to have that alcohol and drugs to go out and dance or joke around, you know, it takes, it takes a lot, it takes a whole family and village to help a child. I've really been pushing, pushing young kids just to help them stay away from, stay away from drugs, mainly drugs and alcohol, you know. It's good to see the young kids sober and come here to have fun, just take off happy after they're done, you know, it's good. I went through it, you know, I went through it and and I'm pushing my kids not to do that, you know, but, you know, it's just, it's just a tough way. That's... Yeah, I was, in, I was getting pretty deep into 
you know, drug scenes and stuff, but, you know, pulled out. Smoking and chewing tobaccos, cold turkey for, that's been two years. That was tough. I started, you know, drinking, smoking and everything when I was 12. Uh, I was getting into the, the hard drugs at like 16 and stuff. And we just continue to, this is one of our healing native people, our healing when we get together. And people are happy and, you know, it's really good. Everybody looks good and everybody dress up real good. see elders in all age groups, middle-aged people, young people, children on the floor dancing is, is just uh, amazing to me. I don't think I know of any other place where all those four generations are interacting with one another in a positive, clean, sober manner. And here, I love it because everybody's sober. That's the main thing that really that's why I love to come back here is because we can't have this back home. Like dances like this, yeah, like back home they got to be, you know, half shot or, you know, 
had a couple beers before they could jump on the st on the floor and dance and it's a event that everybody and elders and kids and children everybody go to so nobody wants to see alcohol or drugs around it helps out a lot too because you know if we have intoxicated people you know you could do some some stupid stuff. Long, long ago, there was a lot, uh, a lot of drinking and. They used to serve alcohol first when it came out. Now it's alcohol free, and it, it really makes a difference. There's all natives in there, right? All mostly natives, and they're all sober. And they're none of them are doing drugs, and I see very few that come out and smoke. People realize they can have fun without alcohol or drugs. And the more they show to other people or show, you know, like on Facebook, how, many, how much fun people are having and visiting one another. Like I said, there's always, there's always that bad side, you know, and, and this is one of our good sides where people get together, enjoy themselves, visit, talk, and dance. And it's really good. Last night about a half past ten, the baby of mine would let me in, so move it on. Move it on over. Move over, old dog, cause a new dog's moving. And take it away, Bill. It all depends on the music sometimes, um, because when I first started, I was with a big band. My family it was my mom, my dad, my uncle, my cousins, my nephew. You know, we, we had a huge. It's so, if they play a song familiar when I played with the Blackburn Band, which was my dad and mom and them, it makes me kind of sad. You know, it's kind of sentimental. You see the songs out there. Some of them they go way back, like Eagle Island. That was way back from Tom Patsy's, my grandfather, who was born in 1900. You know early 1900s or and that song is played uh, not only in the United States people over other countries uh, Indian rock and roll is another popular one you know there's those ones that stick out uh, I've, I've definitely hung out with Josephine probably Josephine Malamy at the most because uh, me and her uh, worked with the program called Dancing with the Spirit and going around to different villages and places around Alaska teaching kids how to play guitar and fiddle so we spent like a week you know, here in one town, a week here in another village, you know, so I know her the best probably of anybody around here. <laughs> Thank you. 
a great time for everybody to get together, and so it's just really, it's a very positive and happy, and I mean, very festive, you know, and, uh, and I like, I like um, being able to play with a bunch of different people, you know, jam with a bunch of people I don't usually see. And then there's the part I can go up and rock it out with people I know that I just have so much fun with. You see new talent like Angela, you know, I teach music with her. And to have that, I mean, it just, it just energizes me when I'm up there with someone in it. And then when I'm out there dancing and hear a good band, like I didn't even want to come in and do the interview, I want to go up there and dance. And who does that? Who dances 12 o'clock in the afternoon and all the way till 12 a.m.? I mean, you're talking 12, 13 hours of at the Baskin Fiddle Festival. Who could ask for more, huh? Fiddlers is fun every year, and that we all, you know, whatever happens at Fiddler stays at Fiddlers, and we go home and, you know, go on with life, but we look forward each year to see our friends. Just a visit, you know, and, and I, and, because there's a lot of communities in the interior, and in, in the state of Alaska, we have friends, everybody got friends all over the state, you know. Oh, they come up from the villages, you know, and, Get to see my people, which is good. Makes you feel good. Miss going home, but uh, I can go to Seattle cheaper than I can go to Nalado. Yeah, we look forward every year to seeing our friends we never see all year long. They're all the way from down around the Yukon. I'm from Shakitsik. Yeah, Tronchikuchin is the Black River. Yeah, that's where, where I'm from, the river. Black River, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm originally from the native village of Kipnuk. It's a, a village about 100 miles southwest of Bethel, along the Berry Sea coast. The same latitude as the south end of the Mkoryak. If you draw this, you hit land, that's where Kipnuk is. And when I first started going, I went just about every year, except for the two times that I had the flu and I've been going every year. We used to live here when it first started, and I volunteer like every year. And then we moved to Anchorage just um, about 10 years ago, but I still go every year. <laughs> we got everything together this year and made the trip up. 
So we're happy to make it here this year. Just my good friends I never see for a long time and I know how they play and what they're going to play and stuff. So we just come together. We don't even practice. We never even practice. We just came together and play. Just have fun. Good to see people. You could go look at that stage and you'll see somebody from, you know, uh, from Galena. You'll see somebody from Stevens Village and somebody from Fort Yukon on stage playing music together. And they haven't played all year together other than in that little room. Um, it's, it's amazing. Um, and people do, you know, make that their one big event a year. I mean, that, that was my mother's big event for the year. I mean, she'd go all out, she'd dress, you know, she'd, um, the last night she'd wear, um, she'd put on a dress, she'd make a special outfit for just for the last night. And, you know, it, it was that um, important to her. It's like it's one of our healings, you know, and, it's, and where our people get together. You see in there where people are happy, you know, and, visiting you know and and uh and uh, even though there's not too many sometimes not too many people there the me people listen to the music why i come to the fiddle festival is to see friends that i haven't seen for a long time mainly to have fun meet new people say hi to family i never seen for a year and listen to music dance it's good for you it's like almost a big reunion every year. You know, we come back, everybody's hugging, good to see everybody. And you, I was just talking to a uh, gentleman out there. I said, what brings you here? He said, I come every couple of years. And he, he knew the artist here. He knew what songs they played. And it was just really cool to hear. It means that where everybody gets together and has a great time out of the year and listen to all the great music and all the company and the friends and family around just brings everybody together and feels like it just makes us stronger in a way. People mingle into, you know, you don't, some of them you see today and they might be gone tomorrow, you know. So it's good to see them. The fiddle fest means God gave us a gift. It's God gave me the gift of playing guitar and singing and writing writing the truth about our land, about our water, the sky, the birds, which is really something happening to it today, but we write about it and we spread the music and it's promoted by the Fiddle Fest through television and radio. It means a lot to me because to see the elders shake hands and they say, may there you are, like, you know, and it's good to be back to see them again because we may not see them again. So that's what brings me back, to see old friends, to play with them again, and to make people happy. Yeah.
recall, uh, the fiddlers really started at our home, and uh, you know party, parties that we had and stuff. And the reason for that was because we wanted the people that came in from the villages to enjoy themselves. The crowd got so big, we had to rent either the elks or uh, the eagles. And that was really uh, fun for everyone because everybody enjoyed their fiddle music and their uh, Western type of singing and everything else that went with that. Between the time that we started it to the time the fiddlers took over, the organization took over, I think it was 20 years that we did it on our own. And I'm really uh, thankful that it, it has turned into what it is today. Okay, Pauline is going to sing Eagle Island.
small car. Get out from your lab and he's from your lab and I can imagine it puts me back years back and 96, 96 years old now, but that puts me back to when I, when I was 16, dancing in our own home, home at the ladder. You know, all friends, all of them. Thank you. <laughs>